Welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is on dimensional analysis, how it, what it is and how to do it. The first thing I want to do is I want to give you a challenge. If I was going to give you some money and I said, I have money in each of my hands, and you can have the money as long as you pick the hand that has the most amount of money in it, but then I show you how much money I have in each hand, that might make it a simpler problem. So in one hand, I have five $1 bills. And in the other hand, I have one $5 bill. So which hand are you going to pick? The one with five ones or the one with a $5 bill? It's kind of a hard thing to pick because you're going to say they're equal, and they are. But five $1 bills is more than one, isn't it? Five is more than one? Or the $5 bill is more than the $1 bills? See. What we're doing today is we're going to work with things that are equal to one. I could say one $5 bill, or I could say five $1 bills, and I'm still talking about the same quantity, even though they have different names. And that's what dimensional analysis is about. It's using different names, multiplying things by something that's equivalent to one, to change it from one unit to the other. So let's do an example. We're going to start with three days. And I want to convert three days into seconds. Well, first I need to think of all the things that equal one that relate three days to the number of seconds. I don't know how many seconds there are in a day, but I do know some things. If I take days and break it down into the next smaller unit, it's going to be hours. And I know there are 24 hours in one day. I know that for sure. So now that doesn't get me seconds, but I'm closer. So I know some other things about hours. I know there's 60 minutes in one hour, and I know there's 60 seconds in one minute. And so through that, I have gone from days to seconds. So let's write it down. When you do dimensional analysis problems, you always write what you start with, what you know. And whether it says day or days, plural, doesn't matter. I'm going to multiply it by one of these things that's equivalent to one. Now I can say 24 hours and one day. Isn't that exactly the same thing? So we can call that one. Or I can say 60 minutes and one hour. Or I can say 60 seconds and one minute. They all equal one. And that's what you're doing in these. You're multiplying by one. And as you know, anytime you multiply something by one, you get itself. Now, here's the tricky part. You see this three days? It's really over an invisible one. We don't show it, but it's there. Sometimes it helps to write that. So if you need help, go ahead and write that. It's not a big deal. So I'm looking at days, and I see that it's in the numerator. The numerator is the top part of the, of the fraction. The denominator is the bottom part. So it's in the numerator. Now, when we were younger, we learned things like 12 thirtieths. And your teacher always said, make sure you reduce, lowest terms, make sure you reduce. And you would look at that and you'd say, oh, I know, I can take a three out of both halves. What you were really doing is you were saying 12 is three times four, and 30 is three times 10. And three over three, as you know, is one. So that's the same thing as four over 10. And then you'd look at that and say, oh, I know, I can take a two out of both of those. Again, what you're really saying is four is two times two, and 10 is 2 times 5. And if I have 2 over 2, that equals 1, so I don't need to use it. I don't need to write it. So if I were going to reduce that, put it in lowest terms, it's 2 over 5. Well, we're doing the exact same thing. We want to get rid of the word days. It's in the numerator. To get rid of the word days, we need to put it in the denominator. Then it's days over days, and that equals 1, and we can cancel it out. My relationship with days is 24 hours, so I have a way to convert hours or days into hours. See how the 24 is next to the word hour? And the number 1 is next to the word day? So I put the 24 next to the hours and the 1 next to the day. You never have to think to yourself, do I divide here, do I multiply? You just need to make sure you line up your units and everything will be fine. Days in the denominator, days in the numerator, and now I'm left with hours. But my question was seconds. So again, now I have hours in the numerator. To convert it or to get rid of it, I want hours in the denominator. And I know how to convert from hours to minutes. One hour 
one hour is 60 minutes. Now notice we use this conversion factor this time because I was changing hours to minutes. I'm no longer changing hours to days or days to hours. I'm changing hours to minutes. So I have to use the conversion factor or the equivalent of one that is minutes and hours. So now I have my information in minutes, but my question said how many seconds. So one last time, minutes is in the, new, in the numerator, minutes in the denominator. I'm going to convert minutes to seconds. I'm going to use this one, 60 seconds is one minute. And now it looks like I'm left with seconds, which is what I want. Sometimes when you do these problems, it's easiest if you make one big line all the way across. Everything on top of the line or in the numerator is multiplied. Anything on the bottom of the line or in the denominator is, is divided. So let's go ahead and work this out. We have 3 times 24 times 60 times 60. And that gives us 259,200 and that's a comma. What's my units? It's seconds. Seconds. So in three days, there are 259,200 seconds. You can put that in scientific notation if your teacher requests it. That's fine. 5.93 centimeters squared. And we want to convert that to meters squared. So what does it mean when I say centimeters squared? It means centimeters times centimeters. And so when you do these problems, a lot of times it's easier to just write the word centimeter twice. Then you're not going to forget that you actually have to do the conversion twice. Again, this is over our invisible one. What's our conversion between centimeters and meters? I know there are 100 centimeters in one meter. So I'm going to multiply that by something that's equivalent to one. I want to get rid of centimeters. It's in the numerator here, so I'm going to put it in the denominator here. I want to be left with meters. The number one is next to meters. The number 100 is next to centimeters. And centimeters cancel out. Now if I stopped there, my units would be wrong. I would have meters times centimeters. And that's not what I want. I want meters times meters. So I have to do that exact same thing again. Centimeters in the denominator. Meters in the numerator. 100 centimeters is 1 meter. My centimeters cancel out, and I'm left with meters squared. I can draw my line if I need to. 5.93 times 1 times 1 is 5.93 divided by 100 divided by 100. So let's see what that gives us. 5.93 divided by 100 divided by 100 again. And that tells us our answer is 5.93 times 10 to the negative fourth meters times meters or 5.93 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. So you do have the correct units and you're good to go.